Our last two learning targets have to do with Le Chatelier's principle. So we're going to define Le Chatelier in our own words, and we're going to explain how our equilibrium shifts if we change the temperature, the pressure, or the concentration. Le Chatelier's principle says when a system at equilibrium is subjected to a stress, the equilibrium will shift in order to reduce that stress. So three stresses, pressure, concentration, and temperature. Um, so stress from increasing pressure. If the pressure on a system at equilibrium is increased, the shift is going to go toward the side with the fewer moles of gas to reduce that stress. Now note that the equilibrium concentrations change, but it does not change KEQ, all right? So our equilibrium constant is going to remain the same. So if we increase the pressure, the equilibrium will shift in the direction where there are fewer moles of gas in order to reduce that pressure. In this case, there are four moles of gas on the reactant side. I'm sorry, let me move this so you guys can see that a little better, okay? Um, and two moles of gas on the product side of the balanced equation. Now, if the volume is reduced by a factor of two and the pressure doubles and the molar concentrations of all species are going to double. The balanced chemical equation has more moles of reactants than it does products, so the denominator of the equilibrium expression increases more than the numerator. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is going to give a Q that is less than KEQ. So to get back to equilibrium, our Q value is going to have to um, increase. So when the volume decreases, the collision rate between the particles is going to increase. This in turn increases the rate of both the forward and reverse reactions. The rate of the reaction that will bring the system to a lower pressure is going to be faster, in this case in the production of ammonia. If the pressure on a system at equilibrium is decreased, then the equilibrium will shift toward the side with more moles of gas to reduce stress. Again, remember that this does not change our KEQ. It only changes the concentra concentrations at equilibrium. Okay? Um, if there's the same number of moles of gas on both sides of the chemical equation, then the pressure will change when the volume changes, but the equilibrium will not shift. If we decrease the pressure, the equilibrium will shift in the direction that produces more molecules of gas in order to increase the pressure. In this case, we have four moles of gas on the reactant side and two moles of gas on the product side. So decreasing the pressure of, um, I'm sorry, decreasing the pressure will trigger the production of more nitrogen and hydrogen gases because this is going to increase the total number of gas particles in the system. <clears throat> All right, stress from increasing concentrations. If the concentration of one of the species in an equilibrium system is increased, then the equilibrium is going to shift in the direction that will reduce the concentration of that species. Again, changes the equilibrium concentrations, but not our KEQ value. All right, so if we assume that each molecule is a mole, and the volume of the container is one liter, then our K value is going to be 0 0.037 if we plug in values using those numbers. If we add five moles of ammonia, the system is no longer at equilibrium. Our Q value becomes something like 1.3. Five moles of ammonia were added, and the rate of the reverse reaction exceeded the rate of the forward reaction to use up some of the newly introduced ammonium until the system reestablishes its equilibrium with the same equilibrium constant. All right, so here we shift our values until we get back to equilibrium. Um, let, oops, sorry, let me go back. Let me just stress that um, if you take something away, the equilibrium is going to shift to fill that gap. All right, so if we add something to it, the equilibrium is going to shift to use it up. So just keep that in mind um, when we're doing this. 
All right, if we decrease the concentration of one of the species, then the equilibrium is going to shift in the direction that will increase the concentration of that species. Again, you know, be, remember that KEQ is not changing, just the equilibrium concentrations. Now, um, if we add additional solvent, like if we add more water to something, the volume is going to increase and the concentration is going to decrease. So something like that happening. All right, so in this case, if we remove ammonia from our system, we are no longer at equilibrium. Notice the number of molecules that have shifted. So our equilibrium is going to shift back toward the ammonia um, so that our system will go back to equilibrium. Okay, stress from changing temperature. Now this particular stress does change both K and Q. The, shift, uh, the shifts that occur with changing temperature can be thought of the same way that we think of changes in concentration. All right, um, this, this first example here is an exothermic reaction. So we can include heat as one of the products in the forward reaction. Um, so if we take heat away, the equilibrium is going to shift to produce more heat. If we add heat, then the equilibrium is going to shift um, to use up that heat. To think about it more scientifically, adding heat will cause an increase in the rate of the endothermic reaction. In this case, that's the reverse reaction. Heat is required to drive an endothermic reaction. If we add more heat, we're effectively adding the energy required to make the endothermic reaction happen more often. This extra energy is going to end up being stored as potential energy in the bonds of the products of the endothermic reaction. In this case, the reactants of the overall reaction. Um, so why does the KEQ change? Well, adding heat to the system is going to increase the concentration of nitrogen and hydrogen. This causes the value for our KEQ to decrease as nitrogen and hydrogen are in the denominator. Removing heat from the system will favor the production of compounds that possess less energy in their bonds, and this is going to increase the concentration of the products in the exothermic reaction, in this case the ammonia. This causes an increase in the value of KEQ because ammonia is in the numerator. Remember that a temperature change is the only stress that will change the value of KEQ. So here's what I just said basically um, summarizing in words here. All right, and here's another picture. This came from your, um, from your book just showing you by color change how the equilibrium would, um, would change. Oops, sorry. <clears throat> Move that out of the way. Um, so you can see here we have the blue color at room temperature when our reactants are favored. When we drive the reaction to the right, let's see, no. When we drive our reaction to the right, we have, uh, we keep our blue color. When we cool it down and we shift it back to the left, then we have our pink color. And we are going to do um, a lab in class where you'll see some of these color changes based on shifts in equilibrium. The effects of a catalyst, remember, are going to lower the activation energy barrier for the reaction. So a catalyst is going to decrease the time that it takes to reach equilibrium. It, you remember that the catalyst does not affect the composition of the equilibrium mixture because it's added in and then it's used up and it doesn't um, participate in the actual reaction. So again, here's our, um, our energy diagram. The green here is uh, your the rate of your forward reaction. This purple here um, is the rate of your reverse reaction as affected by a catalyst. Your rates without the catalyst um, would, look, would be up here. 